One of the basic rules to reduce the risks of bringing disease into either a beef or dairy herd is to minimize the number of new animals being brought onto the farm. Robert Smith runs a flying dairy herd of 125 cows with his son Alan at Barnet Hill near Mochlin in Ayrshire. He buys in carved heifers each year, some from the north of England, which increases his chances of bringing diseases into his herd. To overcome some of these concerns, he started a vaccination program against BVD on the advice of his local vet. One of the problems actually with vaccinating for BVD in a flying herd is you're buying in cattle all the time and it's to make sure that make sure they don't miss the system. They've got to get into the vaccination program. Mm -hmm. I tend um, when we're at Kalil or elsewhere, we tend to ask the sellers if they've been vaccinating. And most of them say they have been vaccinating, but we still bring them home and we still go we still give them a double dose anyway, just to get them into the farm system basically. So as we're going so as when we're doing them it'll always be in January time we're actually going to do them. Yeah. Now that you're tackling BVD, have you noticed any improvement in your milk yield or in your stock or fertility? The calves have improved, but uh, you've really got to be in it for what, nine months, so it'll be from what, October onwards, or, uh, uh, September, October onwards. Hopefully we see the improvements then. Uh, so, and the cows, we haven't had any abortions since the spring, really. I think we'd maybe two, two, two in the spring. Alan, why do you think his, his young stock have improved so much now that he's on top of BVD? Um, it's just immune. The, the challenge that BVD is creating on the immune system of the calf, it just leaves them open <coughs> to scour problems, pneumonia problems, although Robert is, is doing his utmost to control pneumonia pro, um, problems with va a vaccination programme that's already in place in the calves. But the general improvement in calf health is where, mm -hmm. is where you're going to reduce other diseases as well as the BVD. Robert, it's obviously costing you something in vaccination. Yes. Is it worth it? Yes, yes. There's nothing worse than going out there in the morning and seeing calves not well and you, where do you start to jag? Uh, now you're, it's nice to go out and we'll, we'll look at the programme with the automatic calf feeder and the calves are all been drinking. There's nothing more satisfying than that. So uh, it's a long-term improvement, but hopefully we'll get on top of it. The whole it. situation's actually, it's not going to be, there's no overnight cure for this sort of thing. Um, and Robert realises that it's going to be a long term project, really. Um, you're not going to notice a difference in the mm -hmm. first six, eight months. It's hopefully one year, two years, three years down the line that the improvements in the mm -hmm. fresh will be seen. But speaking to other mm -hmm. farmers that's been in it for a while, they've seen big improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, and their cal calves are far healthier, and virus pneumonia's not a thing of the mm -hmm. past, but it's a lot. It's a lot better anyway. It's the other thing, it's not just the sick calves you're looking at, the cost benefit, a lot of that is involved in just increased weight gains, especially Robert's keeping beef, it's all beef bulls that are running, they're selling bullocks, selling heifers, they are probably get a bull in age a bit earlier, so you'll get them away earlier, there's yes. reduced feed costs, and the exact same's happening with these bullocks, they'll be heavier and away at an earlier age, and just that in itself will pay for the vaccine in no time. Yes, definitely. BVD is one disease that farmers are becoming increasingly aware of. So how do they identify BVD? In dairy herds, it's, it's, it's quite straightforward. Um, you can do bulk milk antibody testing, and you can also blood sample uh, a small number of young, young cattle in the herd, um, which aren't putting milk into the bulk tank. And you can see if BVD virus is present in the herd. Um, if it is present, then the, the farmer, in conjunction with his vet, needs to decide what the best strategy is to, to deal with it. It might simply be uh, employing a vaccination program. Um, in some herds, they may want to go down the eradication route, um, sampling animals and, and removing the, the ones that are carrying the virus. One of the problems facing dairy farmers is scour in young calves. There are a number of infectious causes of diarrhoea. Um, there's also uh, a major factor with, with calf scour is, is the, the husbandry of the calf and the hygiene of its environment and the amount of colostrum it gets after birth. So these factors all need to be considered. Uh, once all these factors have been addressed and, and, and the farm and the vet are happy that they're doing all they can to ensure maximum colostrum intake, um, a clean environment and, and other factors of husbandry, then um, it, sampling of calf scour cases can be carried out to be a bit more specific. And, and it simply means collecting a, a scour sample from the calf uh, in the early stages of the, the scour, so when it's first noticed. Uh, co um, collect a scour sample. And it's best to sample um, at least half a dozen calves to get a proper picture. Getting a result on one calf shouldn't be interpreted as meaning that's the, that is the cause of scour for the whole herd. You need to get more than one. 
Another big problem for dairy farmers trying to rear calves is pneumonia. So what, what can they do there to make sure that that isn't such a big problem? Well, again, there's a, like calf scale, there's a big husbandry component, um, stocking density, ventilation of the buildings, uh, this sort of thing. Again, colostrum intake is important. So these factors need to be addressed primarily. Um, if there's a need to identify the specific um, cause of the pneumonia on the farm, um, then sampling of dairy calves is a bit complicated by the fact that they're quite often young, very young when they're infected and they've got antibody from their mother in the bloodstream and this can in inhibit um, the, the tests that we do for, for pneumonia. However, if, if you want to look into pneumonia, if a farmer wants to investigate a pneumonia problem, then there's several ways you can do it. One is to um, submit any calves that, d that die from pneumonia, but these have to be calves that have died very shortly after developing the signs of the disease, within a few days, um, because after that the, the primary cause of the pneumonia has disappeared and you get lots of secondary infections. If the calf's been ill for a week or so, then it's probably not worth submitting it for post-mortem. For the live calves, we can do um, a test called bronchoalveolar lavage, which really means putting a, a bit of a wash solution in, into the calf's windpipe, into the lungs, and sucking it out again. And we can test that for all the different causes of calf pneumonia. At Barnet Hill, Improved management includes careful handling at all stages of the operation, including the transfer of new stock onto the farm. Well, we're still, we've got, we used to have a farm 15 mile away and we had, had, we've always had one lorry because of that, but the lorry is handy, you can buy them at the market, you get them straight home, you get them into isolation pen, and there's no transport in about the country mixed with other stock in an Arctic trailer or a bigger lorry kind of thing, so you're getting them home, getting them milked and getting them settled down and that's worth a lot for the dairy heifer. Alan, not just a flying herd, but inevitably a lot of farmers are going to buy in stock at some stage yeah. of the game. What's the ideal thing that they should do when they bring animals onto the farm? Um, ideally, I mean, it's just all about biosecurity nowadays. Um, ideally, the, the, the TB tested if they're coming from a risk zone before the move and then six days after, as I've already said. Um, again, ideally, we would run them all through a foot bath and keep them, um, run them through a foot bath at least once, preferably three days in a row. I would also like them all to be fluke treated on arrival and especially young stock wormed with two different wormers from two different classes of wormers. Now, whether that might be a white drench and an ivermectin or just as long as they're from two different classes and it's all you can do to reduce the amount of resistance that's coming, resistant worms that's coming onto your own farm. Um, other than that, it's just as Robert says, been careful about what you're buying and trying as much as you can to find out where you're buying them from. What about isolating them for a period of time? Um, ideally a month, but in realistic terms, if you can get them for two weeks, that would be an ideal situation. Even during the summer, if you could, you had a paddock, you could isolate them out in a field for two weeks. Although inside is better, you know they're not going to escape from that field. How about with a milking herd, though, where they've got a mix with... They're going to, the, the situation of milking here, really, if you're buying in young heifers, what, what you would ideally do is milk, not milk them with your cows, but milk them at the end of the cows, except the only reason I would say against that is milk your own cows you know are infected after your new bought in ones.